Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This week is show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Sweet Home, Season 1, Episode 5. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with the Samwook situation. We finally have a lot more context to what it was between him and Yon Jae. Um... I thought it was so interesting too. It wasn't until he finally found out that Sunwoo had gone upstairs. He's like, going upstairs? Bastard was so intent on killing me. Why is he going upstairs now and just not even trying anymore? And he finally realizes the keys are going. And I love that he's like, hey, uh, look, I'm bleeding. That means I'm I'm not infected. You can let me out. Because I guess it's like, I need to make sure I defend myself. Because what he finds upstairs is going to be all he needs. That's the only reason why he hasn't killed me yet. It's because he hasn't doesn't have any proof, I think. Um, but yeah, Sunwook ends up going upstairs with Hyun, but we'll, we'll cover Hyun's side of things. But Sunwook ends up going to, I guess that was maybe, um, Yoon Jae's room. Because he was looking everywhere because I think he was trying to find the evidence. But I don't know if that was like an adjacent room or whether it was like a connected room or whatever. But he walked by, by another door and he uses the key to unlock it. And it's essentially a, a makeshift dark room. And there's a whole bunch of photos. And I was like, okay, so this guy is exactly what I thought he was. I figured, I was like, this ain't just some like... Because I was going back and forth. I'm like, is this some other, like, he's from another case? And it's like, no. I was like, the way he's acting, I'm like, this guy's a creepo, isn't he? And it turns out that is the case. Because I was like, I was like, those don't look like those are women. Don't, not like that'd make it any better. It'd be just as bad. But there's an extra, like, it. just being full-grown women already makes it disgusting. There's an extra layer of disgusting it for it to be young children. You're just like... Oh, he's that dude. And it turns out he's a teacher. You're like, oh my God. You And you see the photos and you're like, this guy's, this guy's sick. And it's like, oh yeah. And we, we don't have context of why Sunwook wanted him dead. Like either that's like one of the children in particular. It seems like they focus on some photos. It seems like it could be of the same little girl. I'm assuming that was supposed to be like maybe his daughter or something. I, we, we don't know. But it's like it does. There's like a whole bunch of photos there. But it seems like he was a teacher that took advantage of his position. And it's just like, yeah, that was all Samuk needed. Went back downstairs. Went after the bastard. Came at Samuk with a hammer, with a mallet. Didn't matter. Samuk beat his ass and then kind of basically killed him in front of everybody. And no one did anything because no one wanted to catch any of that. They were like. Especially, too, because when they were letting him out, they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Young Ju, like, oh, of course, he, he was a good guy, yada, yada, yada. I even love the dog lady called, because she's, because he said, like, oh, you must be from this particular province, and the, the dog lady's like, yeah, but you don't have an accent, like, you're from there. He's like, it's because I lived in Seoul, and it's just like, there's a lot of sketchy stuff about him, and even, um, Onyo kind of points out, like, oh, none of you, like, cared or lifted a finger when he was or said anything when he obviously was getting beat up and no one cared it, just for her it's like oh you hypocrites now you all want to act all nice and stuff like that but none of you were lending a hand when you obviously knew his wounds were from him getting beat up but uh yeah for um Samuk we kind of get like a tiny flashback I don't know if it's his flashback or whether it's uh Yoon Jae's but he was brought before a court, but it turns out they only gave him 11 years in prison and two years of probation. For, 11 months in prison and two years in, uh, of probation for what he was accused of. And it's like, oh, it was an, it wasn't intentional. I guess whatever, like whatever he was accused of, maybe it was like one child. Maybe it, it had to only be one. Either one that they were aware of and he'd done... Because those were many photos. Not unless they were all the same kid, but I'm assuming it was multiple different kids. But maybe he made it seem like, oh, I accidentally killed this child. But not making it... not. But no one... There was no evidence to prove that he had intentionally done it. Because he, cause he's a sicko and he kept trophies. So he had all the evidence because he wanted a reminder of what he had done. So it wasn't just like, oh, I accidentally killed someone and it wasn't intentional. It's like, no, it was 100% intentional. And this is what Sunwook, he just needed the proof, I think. And ended up 
bashing his head in, and it's like, well, you're not just going to get off that easy. You'll get to die peacefully. So bashed his head in, dragged him outside, and left him to be um, left him to be monster food. But I also thought it was interesting too. I'm like, well, you're outside where uh, Suong's body is, as well as that woman's daughter, because she had just pleaded with. Um, Sawuk earlier in the episode, like, please, like, you're a gangster, right? You do anything for money, then find me a way outside. Because at the end of the day, she wanted to get her daughter's body back. Even if the door was going to be closed behind her, once again, she wants to at least be with her daughter. But she was probably hoping to maybe be able to bring her daughter back. I think for her, it's like, I don't care what happens after. I just need to get outside so I can get to my, you know, my child. And so, all we cut to is Sawuk, like, coming up to the gate, and he's stumbling a little bit. But then he ends up like trying to drag the gate down because he's like, fine, I'll just stay out here because after what I've done, I don't deserve to. But interestingly enough, it's Jae Hyun who ends up stopping him from lowering the gate. I think it's because he's so bloodied up and like dizzy. He's not strong enough. I guess it's also just to show you how strong D- Jae Hyun is. Um, Jae Hyun is just because he's able to kind of hold that off despite how strong uh, Sun Wook is. But it's just kind of because we see that. And I wonder, did no one do anything after the fact? Because we didn't see the scenes, but I'm curious, did uh, Jae Hyun show everyone what was on the phone? Because that's why he realized like what um, Samuk was doing, what he was doing it for. It's like he mu- whatever that message was on his phone, he saw it and was like, okay, this is this is what this is about. And then we pan out just as Sun Wook passes out. He dragged both of their bodies back in. But they were able to give them proper burials this time. Um, all three of the victims. They, the, the, first, the guy that died at the beginning of the first episode from the monster. Along with um, the um, Sun, uh, Sun Young and uh, as well as that woman's daughter. Might be a gangster, but showing that at the end of the day, this guy isn't a complete another monster. Yoon Jae, on the other hand, now that's a monster, you know? So I guess it's that thing of how far are you willing to go? Are you willing to become a monster just to get rid of another monster type of situation? Which perfectly ties into Hyun's situation where we have uh, Yoon Hyuk dis- making the decision, the unilateral decision of, hey, we need to use Hyun. You are already in a transitional period. You're in that golden hour with with your monsterism and monsterization. So we're going to use you as our muscle to do whatever we need to. Why sacrifice those who aren't in that process when we can just use you? Like, right, you can, you'll be useful to us. You'll be handling all the dangerous tasks for now. And Hyun doesn't have anything to really counter that. Because he wants Dusik because he finds out like, oh, that guy made... Because I forgot about that. Because last episode, he had asked uh, Jay Hugh, and it's like, who made that shield for you? And it's like, we need him to fortify our defenses because they're lacking. The monsters could bust in at any point in time. So he needs an old man, but he also tells Hugh, yeah, you can bring the kids too, but they're secondary. If need be, you can leave them behind. Just showing, because he's, he's meant to be that pragmatic character where it's like, yes, I can come off a little harsh and soulless but it's like i'm doing what needs to be done because no one else is stepping up to make these decisions so and yi kion ends up calling him out for doing what he's doing it's like right you're willing to cast a human aside it's like well at the end of the day you got to get used to using people who are in this transitional period because they're no longer humans you know because at the end of the day, none of us are going to survive this. Like, all we can do is just fight it off as long as we can to survive. Because the military did say, like, hey, we're coming to save you. Just make sure all you can do, all you have to do is survive. That ended up being a point of contention last episode of, well, they're asking us to survive. But will they actually come rescue us? Or by the time when they, I mean, we're still going to have to survive on our own. They're just leaving us on our own to fend for ourselves until maybe they come in this direction. Because this is also... Eon Hyuk's way to kind of make up for him. It's specifically, I'm no longer going to hesitate. I'm making the definitive action because he hesitated before. Like, it's just, he felt, I don't know if he, like, he does regret the way things played out with that woman's daughter. Then also the whole uh, Su Young situation as well. And also Yi Kyung. 
which she knows like, hey, you used me too. But it's like, if I didn't, if I'm not using Hugh now, who else would I use? You didn't want to be used. And I got, it's just, he, he kind of handles things the dickish way. Once again, it's supposed to be like, I'm that pragmatic person in the group that it's like, I do the nasty, I make the hard decision no one else wants to make. Because he'd even brought up the point that he kind of showcases like he is very pessimistic when it comes to people. He doesn't believe people will do the right thing in the end because he was actually going to change the ballot. He was like, I was actually, I already had it prepared because I was so certain a lot of people were going to kick Hewn out. And he's like, I was actually really, really surprised when the vote ended up being half and half the way it was. But, you know, Yi Kyung was like, see, like, people aren't as bad, kind of as bad as you think. But he's like, no, you think it was out of their kindness of their heart? Like, um, Jae Hyun and Jisoo, of course, would vote to keep you on because they were with him a little longer, but no one down here knows him. Like their own introduction to him was like, Hey, he's infected. He's already becoming a monster. He held healed from a wound where he fell from the ninth floor. So they've already got that. That's their introduction to him. So they have no connection. with. So why would other people still here vote towards keeping him? And it's like, it's because, None of them knows when their time is going to be up. And so it, it's probably a combination of, hey, let's keep him around because if we can learn more about his monsterization process, it keeps us alive. But also maybe we could still use him. It's easier to focus on his monsterization and it takes away from ours because we still don't know how this whole situation works. Because um, what I thought was interesting is the post that him and Hune read as we got that, like, was that episode two, I think? They both read it. We cut back and forth between them reading it. And what was interesting, though, is because he's saying, like, oh, this is like some curse, like, um, crew crew or something like that, which I was. It almost sounds similar to the situ. If you if you read Gannibal. Not read, read, well, read Gannibal or watch Gannibal because I'm assuming the same thing applies in both the manga and the live action TV show. But there's a, I mean, it's and, and that same thing's applicable in different, I guess, mythologies and, and, and um, across different um, nationalities and countries. But the whole like eating cannibalism, how it could transform you into something. I'm because that crew, I guess, maybe, maybe. Well, it's because it's like crew crew or something like that. I guess that maybe that's supposed to be the equivalency of like curse or something, or maybe a very specific version of curse. Because they had read the post of like, this isn't some disease, it's a curse. And the moment Hyuk showed Yi Kyung the, the post, it triggered something in her, a memory. It seems like her fiance might have been the one who wrote it. Because we have no idea, like, because Hyok recognized this, like, right, this was something from a blog post that went public before the government announced it. I mean, typically, the government will be aware of stuff, they'll get a little heads up before the general public does. So, by the time you'll find something out, usually the government will have known in advance, because they only want to let you know when they figured they have some solution. Or maybe it's, it's like, right, this went so massive so quickly, like... We tried to like have a buffer zone so that we could be prepared to kind of obfuscate any you know issues that might be. You don't want to make anyone panic, but the problem is, is it ended up going widespread before they could come up with any countermeasures. So it's like right, we have to be like okay, we have to make the announcement now because things had already popped off by the time even the president got on the airways to be like yeah, this is happening. And now even the military being like, yo, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. And this is what's causing this desire. So on and so forth. So thought was so interesting. And for it to tie into I wonder is that supposed to indicate her fiance we don't cause we don't know what he did. We know she's a firefighter, but it could be that he was like like a pretty not he doesn't have to necessarily be high up, but he could have been I mean I think I don't know if firefighters I mean that's I I'm sure that falls under public service. Yeah, because like art police can they're not considered like Government workers are considered like essential uh, public servants, but not um, government workers. So, but maybe her fiance worked for the government in some capacity, and it kind of 
clicked down it and that he was trying to put that out there on just some anonymous blog post. But once again, she saw him with it and assumed that was him writing it, which maybe it was. So that is interesting, but she's keeping that to herself. So, but anyway, circling back to human circumstances, he goes upstairs along with, uh, Son Wook and they cross paths with monsters. I'm sure like, they probably cut that down because of the live action, but maybe that was probably explored a little bit more. Cause we do see like he was fighting at one point in time, him and Sam Wook. And we probably would have got a little more exploration of their dynamic together. Like who knows what those conversations would have been like, but they also run into another monster, which is a thing that I feel like the one with the hand that had grabbed Sam Wook and dragged him out. We even got the journal I can only assume, and maybe it was the exact same way in the webtoon, but I'm assuming that's a story we would have gotten explored more in the webtoon of like that. We probably would have actually gotten to see those events un, uh, unravel. Or maybe maybe just what we got in the show is just what happened. I, I feel like just for time's sake, they probably didn't explore all a lot of these other side stories that sadly you don't get um, who have sad endings. Like, like they probably don't explore that and, Maybe some of these other characters would have gotten backgrounds at this point in the webtoon, but we haven't really explored. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm so curious. Because, once again, the one I'm so curious about is Hyuk and his sister. Like, what their deal is. We still haven't found out, like, what their... What, in particular, his sister. Like, what um, Yeon Yu's situation is. Why she is kind of the way she is. I mean, Hyuk even said it himself of, like, yeah, everyone's scared. And it even... Well, I don't remember if it was him that said that. Like, someone was talking about everyone being scared, and you kind of intercut with all these different people, and it does focus on her as well. Because, once again, she is acting out of fear. She's just overcompensating, I think. But either way. They end up running into Yuri, as well as the guy that she's taking care of. Yeah, uh, because I was like, wow, this part of the building's on fire. Should we be a little concerned about that? But it turns out he's the one, like, fighting one of the monsters. I don't know if they killed it or it just got away, but it was like a jacked monster, and it was, like, super fast, and it was running away from them. I guess that's why the place is on fire, because it was, like, probably banging around, or every time they're trying to shoot it, they're missing it, you know. But he's not too worried about your He's like, but shouldn't we be concerned about you burning down the building? But it seemed like the monster that grabbed Son Wook didn't kill him. It's like, wait, it just grabbed him and left him alive because this is all tied to a guy who he who is, it was it was his monstrous form was driven by the fact is that he was scared, he was angry at himself and loathed himself for not holding on to his son. He's like, if I had reached out my hand and grabbed my son when the monsters that came, maybe things would be different. Because if you look at the body. It looked like it was a smaller body, so I don't know if it's supposed to be an adult body or whether that was supposed to be a kid's body. I can't... T I guess it's supposed to be adult's body because based on what we saw in the journal, I think it's supposed to be his. But yeah, like you see the body there and like the arms are stretched. He's the one with the arms. And I guess... We look in the room and there's a whole bunch of dead bodies. Like I guess maybe the monster was driven by its desire to... Because I... Oh, I couldn't protect my son, so... Uh, because I couldn't stretch out my arm more like that. Design. Like I said, it feels like that's a story that we're getting like, that backdrop there, but truth be told is it feels like that might have been something that was fully more explored in the webtoon, but... Because he was driven by the voice that say like, oh, this is all your fault, but he's like, yeah, it is my fault, but he's like, no, it's not my fault, and it's just that back and forth, I think, played, and then maybe he just eventually completely gave in to the voice, I mean, hence him becoming a monster, so... Just a tr so many tragic tales. Once again, also adding that thing of, oh, how many people are actually still alive in this building? That's that's at least um, well, probably like maybe a dozen bodies that was in that room. Yuri and the old man end up taking Hyun as well as Son Wook back to the old man's place. And Son Wook wants to go off on his own, which leads to his side of things. But Hyun, like, wants to try and leave, too, and he's covering up his wound, and the old man's like, oh, you're already in your monster process, get out of here, you know. But then, like, as Hyun's leaving, he starts laughing, he's like, oh, kid, I'm just 
playing with you. Like, why would I care? You might be turning into a monster, but I'm I'm already in the process of dying. So I'm keep I'm keeping alive little by little, but I'm already dying. So what do I have to fear? So it's like right, there's kids that are in danger. You're trying to get to do sick. Like uh, all right, you, you need my help. And I haven't been even being like, yo, Yuri, you're fired. You don't have to look after me anymore type of situation. You've done a good job up until now. But it's like, nah, uh, let's go, kid. Which Hyun's like, because the guy's like, oh, yeah, I'm not afraid to die. And Hyun's like, no, everyone's afraid to die. But he was like, kid, let me give you some advice. There's a difference between not being afraid to die and wanting to die. There is a There is a distinction there. Which I think is kind of an important thing. And I think that's going to stick with him. Because it's like, right. Just because you're like not afraid to die. Doesn't mean you're going to go step fast. Because he's like, dude, I plan on living longer than everyone else. I might have a ticking clock. But I'm still going to make that worthwhile. Because he's like, yeah, let me go help with those kids. Because this way, if I do die, I can die a hero. But I don't, I don't I'm not running. I'm not going to be so ready to die. I'm going to, I'm going to live longer than everyone. Which you know, sadly, he's not. Either he's going to sacrifice himself or his illness will get the best of him, I'm assuming. They do manage to get to uh, do sixth place. What's interesting, though, is uh, picking up where that storyline left off at the end of last episode. Do six, see, I, I didn't reckon, because I, I saw it as kind of like, okay, this looks like a, and I was saying placenta last episode. The word I was kind of trying to think of was embiotic sac. It looks like one. And. I saw the big bulge. Now in this episode, it would seem much more clearer. I was like, "Oh, it, you can actually see it. It's it's a it's a body. You can, it's the big bulge is a head, and you can see the rest of the small body." I was like, "Oh yeah, it's, it is." I mean, I figured it was kind of like a giving birth type of situation, just because of Miss M's like circumstances. It makes sense, but I didn't like I said last episode. I only saw like the bulging part, and I didn't even realize that was the head. And then, like, like I said, this episode, I saw it a lot more clear of the body. But I, I knew it was still supposed to be, like, an egg type of situation. Like, giving birth type of thing. And, like I said, because of her circumstances, it makes sense. But Ms. Uh, Dusik isn't able to pull the trigger because he had a conversation with her. And she wanted the same thing as he And it's like, if I turn into a monster, will you kill me? Because she talks a little bit about her child. We also find out Dusik has children of his own but he says used to and he and he points at his legs he's like before this happened so i'm assuming maybe it was an accident that let like either him and his i don't I, there there's so many ways you can interpret it i don't know if that's supposed to mean like oh like because i ended up this way maybe i was angry and maybe my wife ended up taking my children but I don't know if it's like, a, oh, my children used to be in my life, but they're not, or whether that's indicative of, oh, there was an accident in my case as well, but I survived, but my children didn't. I, I don't know. Because that's left so open-ended that that could be, we don't really have an answer for that. Whether we will get a full answer for that, maybe, maybe not. But um, at the end of the day, Deucey, because it was like, he told her, like, I don't think I'd be able to do it. He's like, because I don't think I'd be able to look after these kids without you. And you see that kind of smile on her face being like, you know, and it, it, later on, the kids were asking about her and Deucey, I think, didn't want to say anything. So he just closed the door. He was like, no, she's not in there. She, she's gone. And we just have to let her go. Now, that could be a thing of it, that. Like, I think the oldest understood what it meant. I don't know if the youngest did, but the conversation being. I don't know if that's supposed to be indicative of like that. No, she's not in there as in like, no, she left the apartment. She's off on her own. We got to let her go. Or what you could say like that. No meant, Hey, she's gone. She's not in there. Whatever's in there. Isn't her anymore. Cause when Hyun comes back, he's like, where's the lady? And he goes in there and sees her. And there was this moment of like rest in peace. So I don't know if it's like they ended up, he ended up killing her or whether they're just going to leave her alone in that bathroom. I don't know. Cause we never saw like a resolution to it. It did seem like Hyun was going to kill her just to kind of put her at peace, but I don't know. Cause it's also sad too because their monsterization situations happen pretty close to each other too. So that's got to sting a little seeing like her going full monster. And but he also like had Jisoo make that promise of, like if I transform you to kill me. So I think that's because Jisoo speaking of her, she overheard the conversation between, um. Eon Hyuk and uh, Yi Kyung. So 
her and um, Jaehyun are like making a they made a giant SOS message because she knows like we can't stay here that long it's not that safe because the way they're willing to use Hyun it's like they're also going to use us it's only a matter of time before any of us transform and we're just going to use each other like just using people the way Hyuk does it's like this isn't like really the safest safest place to be so what happens beyond that we'll ultimately have to wait and see But back on the uh, entrance floor, um, with the kids being there, because uh, the bodies were brought in, the youngest was like, why can't they bring in dad's body? And it's like, because it's not safe, and it'd also be too sad for us. Because where his body fell, I don't know where that is. And, like, I don't know, that's probably, like, on the sides of the building. Because his body didn't fall on the, because the, that's the front entrance, so his body either fell on, like, the back side of the building, or it's in, like, one of the, the side parts of the apartment complex. But, um, she was also like, we don't want to see Dad like that, it'd be, it'd be too sad. Um, uh, but, because we also don't know if anything got to his body while he was, when his body fell, because there was things, you know, there was at least that monster that was responsible for his death down there as well so we don't know if it got to his body or not at this point and just that moment of the kids and that mom that mom being able to hold her daughter one last time and then her going over there like breaking down and the kids being able to break down like they the young the children have had their chance to cry but so has a mom but it was just this final moment of just them all being able to let it out of just like right they have no one and she lost her daughter it's just being able to kind of finally purge all of that out we also have like Yi Kyung asking her later on, "Is she okay?" And she's like, "I'm a mom. I have to, you know, I I, I can I can be strong. I can survive this." Which even um, Silk uh, Hyun, his uh, wife, was talking to Yi Kyung about, "Right, you're pregnant, right?" I just I wanted to kind of con- like she says it when she walks away, but it's like I just want to congratulate you because Yi Kyung's like, "I'll handle this on my own." I guess it's like you feel like you can't really. Re- not really the perfect, not, not, not the best time to be pregnant in general, but also how do you know anyone's really going to help you, especially who can you rely on when everyone's kind of looking out for themselves and their own best interest. Speaking of, um, Sukiyon's wife, like the fact is that he underestimates his wife who was so willing to kill him because for her, it's like, I could, if you, because he was threatening her earlier, grabbing her and saying like, hey, if I become a monster, what makes you think I won't eat you first? But for her, it's like, if I become a monster, I will kill you, but that won't make me happy. So I'm going to kill you as a human. And she has a knife and everything, but she still can't bring herself to do it. Which, you know, I think that speaks volumes about her as a person in the regards that she's not willing to, well, I mean... In the eyes of the law, no, it's not going to be justifiable, but on a moral level, like on just a human level, you're like, it's understandable. You're being abused by your husband. He doesn't treat you well. He hits you and abuse you physically, verbally, and mentally, and emotionally. Then it's like any person would understand you wanting to kill him, and maybe she will. I'm sure she'd also rather do it while he was human and not... Because it make it more satisfying to kill him as himself, and rather than wait to him to become a monster to do it. So, but she doesn't get her chance. Maybe she's just biding her time. But also, maybe she just she's trying to work up the nerve to do it. So we'll we'll see how that storyline turns out. But the end of our episode showcases um, Hyun being called upon again by uh, Hyuk to go back upstairs what for this time i don't know if it's like oh go look for more survivors or maybe more supplies and food and stuff like that because they are sharing what food they do have left keep it on a more sparing side so because they have no idea how long this is going to last and there's quite a few people this food is going to get split amongst we don't know how much time has really passed we're still in maybe the single digit days of confinement as they put it because the old man was writing about hearing the announcement and that was like day four so it might be like this might have been a full week now oh and it, i also left off the 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 point too where we saw um i think it was the very very end of the episode as hyun's going up 
you know, the building, we end up seeing that specifically, I think it's him like using like the fire escape, like outside portion to kind of climb up the building. But we see uh, Yoon Jae's body being eaten by that monster that's outside the one that punctures you. And we see it eating off of him. And then the hulking monster that uh, Jae Hyun tricked to like, go through the window and land outside. Obviously, it's still alive and well. And it grabs that creature. So either they're fighting over food or it's just like... Like I said, they have a very antagonistic... like. They're all driven by the animal in this animalistic instinct to survive. So it's like it's probably like, no, I'm gonna eat him. He's mine, so get out of my way. I don't think the monsters eat the monsters, but they do. Obviously, we've seen they duke it out. But I think it's more specifically of who gets to eat that body. I'm sure it's gonna be part of that. So I guess it's also a good thing they got the bodies back inside when they did. So we'll ultimately have to wait to see where, like I said, all of this takes us. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.